hello my dear students here i am just going to explain solution for one of the gate question asked in power electronics in the year 2023 latest one right please go through this question my dear students and try to solve this question by yourself just take one minute or two minute and before that before explaining the solution for this question let me explain to understand and practice power electronics what is the reference for us what is the reference for power electronics first of all you can refer my regular classroom course regular classroom course okay just refer the regular classroom notes classroom notes is very important just go through my regular classroom notes and then you just go through the qrc program in power electronics regular course i'll be taking about 70 to 80 hours to complete power electronics and in qrc just five hours we have done that means in qrc program of power electronics i have given summary chapter wise as per the examination point of view so it is a quick revision course for power electronics within five five hours i have completed the entire course only summary what to study or how to remember what formulas to remember how to remember the formulas and how to practice the questions all these things we have done in qrc program if you go through the qrc program you can write down the short notes and that will be very much helpful uh, when you have short time for preparing competitive exams like gate okay and then practice all the pyqs previous year questions minimum last latest 15 years last 15 years last 15 years minimum minimum last 15 years practice all the questions okay so after preparing this regular course qrc program and solving all the pyqs of the latest 15 years okay definitely you will get very good confidence not only in power electronics in all the subjects plan the things and do with commitment definitely success will be at your doorstep right now let us go through this question my dear students it is a single phase uh, bridge rectifier with the three thyristors and one diode feeding constant current 10 amperes here t1 and t3 are fired at alpha is equal to 60 degrees so t1 and t3 fired at 60 degrees t2 is fired at 240 degrees the reference for alpha is the positive zero crossing voltage of input voltage find out the average voltage across the load in terms of volts i hope you understood this question yes now see this first of all we have to understand the waveform for output voltage just see here the input voltage input voltage of the source is sinusoidal input voltage is sinusoidal and so on the peak voltage is 100 volts in all positive cycles t1 and t3 is forward bias in all positive cycles thyristors t1 and t3 is forward bias negative cycle these two diagonal elements t2 and d1 is forward bias t2 and d1 is forward bias right now where we are giving gate signal for thyristor t1 for thyristor t1 with reference to the zero crossing point firing angle is given at alpha is equal to 60 degrees for the thyristor t1 and t3 and for thyristor t2 gate signal is given at 240 degrees from here it is 240 so here gate signal is given for thyristor t2 so that means this angle is pi plus alpha see 180 plus 60 240 right 180 plus 60 240 so it is at pi plus alpha for t2 for t1 and t3 once again gate signal is given at 
2 pi plus alpha. Okay. Now let us draw the output waveform for this so that you will understand the concept properly. Yes. Let us draw the output voltage waveform. Here, make sure that the load current is constant always. Load current is always constant. So, gate signal is given at alpha here, pi plus alpha here and 2 pi plus alpha here, right. So, now T1 and T3 begins here, T1 and T3 begins at alpha and T1 and T3 continues even in the negative cycle, is it right? See, T1 and T3 will conduct here. What happens in the negative cycle? In the negative cycle, T2 and D1 are forward biased. That means when the voltage polarity is reversed here. See, in the negative cycle, when voltage polarity is reversed, these two are forward biased. For diode, no need of gate signal. So, immediately when supply voltage reverses, D1 begins. When D1 begins, T1 will switch off in the negative cycle. Right? But in the negative cycle, immediately after pi, T2 is also forward biased. But gate signal is not given to T2. Because I did not give gate signal for T2 after, after pi, it remains in the off state. When T2 remains in the off state, T3 continues to conduct because of inductance, right? See, current is constant in the load. When current is constant in the load, either T2 or T3, any one should be in the on state. So, even though it is forward biased in the negative cycle after pi, but I did not give gate signal for T2. So, that is why T2 remains off and T3 continues to conduct. So, T3 continues to conduct. So, T1, T3 and D1 means freewheeling. So, freewheeling means voltage becomes 0 here. So, here voltage becomes 0 here. Here freewheeling through T3 and D1. T3, D1. This is freewheeling, 0 voltage. Now, at pi plus alpha, we are giving gate signal to T2. When I give gate signal to T2, T2 will switch on. So, T3 will switch off. T2, D1, load is reverse connected minus Vs. So, it will reverse again. You will get minus Vs here. So, now T2, D1 minus Vs minus Vs. And T1, T2 gate signal is given at 2 pi plus alpha. Up to 2 pi plus alpha, even though they are forward biased, they remain in the off state. That is why T2, D1 continues in the negative cycle because current should be circulated. Then after that, again, when I switch on T1 and T3, T2, D1 will switch off. T1 and T3 means again Vs. So, this is 2 pi. Wait. So, this angle is 2 pi plus alpha. This angle. Okay. So, let us derive the expression for average voltage here. Let us derive the expression for average voltage. 1 by time period is 2 pi. 1 by time period is 2 pi. Now, integral of alpha to pi, this is Vm sin omega t. It is Vm sin omega t into d omega t. Plus integral alpha to pi, this is pi plus alpha, right? Integral pi plus alpha to up to 2 pi plus alpha, this is minus Vm sin omega t. Okay? So, next. Integral of pi plus alpha to up to 2 pi plus alpha. This is actually minus Vm sin omega t. Minus Vm sin omega t d omega t. Okay. So, with this average voltage you will get Vm by 2 pi into 1 plus 1 plus 3 into cos alpha. Actually, this is the formula for average voltage in this case. Now, in regular course, I explained some techniques to expect this average voltage directly. 
okay if you do not understand the techniques to get the average voltage then from the basic concept you have to draw the waveform and derive the expression for average it is actually very time consuming when you don't know the shortcut methods definitely it will take a lot of time but in made easy we explain some shortcut methods how to remember the formula for different cases okay you can go through the qrc program you will get lot of shortcuts to remember this formula so what is the peak voltage of ac supply in this case in this case peak voltage is 100 by 2 pi into 1 plus 3 into cos of alpha is 60 degrees so just simplify this one you will be getting 39.78 volts 39.78 volts uh, my dear questions, my dear students, see there may be small changes in future. See here, three thyristors and one diode. Sometimes there may be, there may be one thyristor and three diodes. So examiner will have different possibilities to change the questions in the upcoming years. So previous year they asked three thyristors, one diode. You try to practice one thyristor with three diodes. See, this was the question asked in 2023, three thyristors with one diode, no? Do the same question with one thyristor and three diodes. Try this question, right? All the best, my dear students. Thank you.